many here would really like to get some more education or training to do the work you love? Raise your hand. How many are a little worried that the education they already have might be coming a little obsolete? And finally, how many of you have someone who is either currently getting ready to go to college, in college, or will be going to college in the next little while? Raise your hand and keep it up if you're worried how you're going to pay for it. You see, college educations have become more important. We find that the college costs have also increased significantly. And part of the problem with that is we have a lot of people who are finding themselves graduating and getting a degree that did not prepare them for the job or the high pay they were promised. And they are having to delay buying a home or starting a family or moving ahead with their life because they are enslaved with crushing student debt. Currently, student debt ranks second only to a mortgage as the largest single debt that most Americans will incur. We have people who are graduating and they are paying on their student debt for 20 and 30 years. And the sad part is, it doesn't have to be that way. I'm Larry, the scholarship guy Stevenson, author of four books, nine online courses on how to invent or reinvent yourself through new training, new jobs, or a new purpose in life. I presented to over 1,600 audiences in 30 plus countries. Clients that I have worked with have found free money. Now when I say free money, they had to invest time and we taught them how to invest the time more effectively and more efficiently so that they got more money with less time. For example, one young lady earned $360,000 in scholarships between her 13th and her 18th birthday. Now how many think that's a pretty good salary for someone that age? Yeah. Another young man, in one year, 17 years old, he earned $47,000. Once again, not bad. Some of us wish we were making 47 right now, right? And a single mother of two children, a 30-something single mother of two children, went back and she got scholarships, free money for college to pay for tuition, books, and housing for her junior and senior year of college and $98,000 for her graduate program, which only cost $48,000. Now I want you to think about that. Do you think that that single mother of two was living in the dorms? No, she's using scholarship money to pay her rent and her mortgage. That's what we're talking about. I'm Larry Stevenson, the scholarship guy, and I can help you, whether you're 13 or 62, to get the money that you want for yourself or for a loved one to pay for school with an investment in time and a little bit of energy. Is that okay? Let's talk a little bit about four myths. We're going to debunk four myths that prevent people from getting the money. Myth number one, there is a scarcity of scholarships. People have this feeling that there's not enough money out there. Recent study pointed out that $2.3 billion in free government money went unclaimed in one year alone. I had a friend, he was the president of the state chapter of the Public Works Association, and he called me and he said, Larry, our association is supposed to give out $850 a year in a scholarship. We haven't given it out for four years because nobody has applied. I'm determined to give it out on my watch. <laughs> and then he said, who do you know that would qualify? And I said, well, what are the qualifications? She said, first, you, you have to be a junior in high school. If you're a senior, it's too late. 
So how many of you know someone who is currently a junior in high school or has yet to be a junior in high school? Raise your hand. So all of you know someone who qualifies so far, right? Second qualification, they have to be interested in engineering. But then he said, they don't have to ever take an engineering class. <laughs> they just have to be interested. So for $850, how interested could you be? Very right? Very Third qualification, they had to write a 500 word essay, now that's one page, 500 word essay on how public works benefits society. I want you to think about this. This is for $850. How long would it take you to write one page on the topic, sewers are good? <laughs> An hour? Two hours? I mean, we got to edit it and refine it, and this is for money, right? So if you got it and you spent two hours, you just made $425 an hour. And that's not bad even by Vegas standards, is it? <laughs> so I gave him seven names. Five of them never applied because they didn't think they qualified. Two of them applied. One of them forgot to attach the essay. So the one who got the $850 got it because he was the only one who did what they asked him to do. <laughs> Myth number one, totally false. There is lots of money out there. Don't let that stop you. Myth number two, I have to wait till I'm a senior or a senior in high school to apply. Now, when I first started doing that, that was kind of the rule. People waited till they were seniors. But since then, we have discovered over 350 scholarships that will only be given to juniors in high school. So if you wait till you're a senior, you already missed those 350 plus. We found 200 that are awarded only to sophomores. And we recently found a list of 28 scholarships for 13-year-olds. So this concept of waiting, don't. Start your family, your friends young. But that also doesn't mean that you have to give up once you're in college. I already told you about the young lady who got the 360,000. She started at age 13 had uh, one person who the 30-something single mother, she started at 30 and she got $180,000. I worked with a 62-year-old and she got $6,000 in just one year. And I went back to get my master's when I was 53 years old and I only spent $3,000 of my own money. You can get money at any age. Start young and keep going till you're older and you really are finished. Now, now I also want to say this. These scholarships can be used for both a degree in an institution, a university, but they can also be used for technical schools. If you want to go to technical schools, you can get scholarships to help pay for technical schools. And you don't have to wait to be a senior and you don't have to give up once you're out of college. Myth number three, they only give scholarships to a certain privileged group. Now we all know who those groups are. In fact, I'm gonna ask you to participate now. You tell me the people who really get scholarships. Who are they? High GPA. Okay, high GPA, who else? Athletes, Athletes. who else? Native Americans. Native Americans, who else? First in college. Say that again? First in college. First in college, good. Any others? Leadership. Leadership. Kids of the 1%. Kids of the 1%, especially if the parents are willing to pay the money to bribe them in. <laughs> I used to really like that show, too. <laughs> um, all of these are the ones we think of, right? It's also, yes, true, but it's also only partial true. You see, the number one barrier to people getting scholarships, they don't believe they deserve it. They don't think they're good enough because they think only certain people get it. I can relate to that. In my senior year of high school, I wanted to go to the University of Southern California. 
I applied for one thing. I thought it was a scholarship. It wasn't. It was a grant. And I didn't know the difference. Grants are given based on need. Scholarships are given on, based who've, on what you have done and who you are. But I didn't understand that. My parents made too much money, and so I got rejected. And what it told me was what I already knew. I wasn't good enough. So I never applied for anything else. 26 of my friends got full ride scholarships. Imagine how I felt on my first day, not at USC, but at a lesser ranked school. When I found out that I had graduated 18th out of my class of uh, 860. Now if you do the math, 26 of my friends had full ride scholarships. That meant that six of them were walking around with the money I should have gotten, but didn't because I didn't apply, because I didn't believe I was good enough. I remember working with one client. This was a young man. He was in ninth grade. He had a 3.1 grade point average. Now, did they give a lot of money for 3.1? We think not. He didn't believe that. He knew three things in life. He knew first, he wanted to go into mechanical engineering. Second, he wanted to go to the top mechanical engineering school in his state. And third, he did not want to live at home. So in ninth grade, he, because he's a mechanical engineer, he made himself a rocket chart. You know, the kind that you fill in for fundraisers? And he started coloring in as he got the money. Four years later, he graduated from high school, still with a 3.1 grade point average. He never got his grade point average higher. But all but the last three months of his rocket chart were totally colored in for tuition, books, and housing in mechanical engineering at the top mechanical engineering school in the state with a 3.1. There's not a special group they give them to. In fact, <clears throat> part of the problem is most of us have been hardwired to feel very uncomfortable saying good things about ourselves, right? We're hardwired as children and through our teens and even as adults. Words come into our mind when we feel like saying something good, like stuck up, conceited, full of it, big headed, right? And so we have a tendency to generalize or understate what we did. And as a result, we wind up not getting the money we want because we didn't give them correct information. We gave them bad information to make a decision where all we had to do was tell them the truth. Now, I'm going to help you with that. I have here a list. This is a list of what they give scholarships for. As I read this list, I want you to mentally count in your mind every time I read something that applies to you. Okay. If, if I say it and, and it applies to you, not that, you know, like when I go athletics, they're not saying that you were the starting center on the Houston Rockets who beat my team last night. <laughs> but they're just saying that this is something that you are. So, academics, activism, athletics, creative talent, entrepreneurship, ethnic background, leadership, service, Surviving trials. Now keep counting. These are now character traits. Hard work, teamwork, perseverance, initiative, passion, enthusiasm, responsibility, civic duty, purpose, and integrity. Now that's the list of what they want to reward. All those of you who counted at least seven things on that list, would you please stand? All those of you who are standing, you are the ones they want to give the money to. So give yourselves a hand. Thank you very much.
That is one way to get a standing ovation. <laughs> These characteristics also form themes in your life, themes that who you are. And these themes are what you can use to search for the scholarships that apply to you. You can search for the Creative Talent Scholarship or the Academic Scholarship or the Athletic Scholarship. They also become the themes that you use to describe why you deserve the money. Which brings us to the fourth myth. Myth number four. Because I'm only going to apply for four or five scholarships, I'm going to make my application up from scratch each time. In our system that we teach, you're not going to apply for four or five scholarships. You're going to apply for 50 to 150. And so we're going to create an assembly line of reusable materials that you will copy and paste and insert into the applications so that you're whipping those applications out every 20 to 30 minutes. Does that make sense? One of the things is we're going to take those themes and we're going to prepare some statements. And those statements are short, factual, honest, never lie about what you have done according to your themes. Can I share with you three examples from one young man who got $38,000 just using these three? Okay, so first he was, quote, as chairman of our high school sub for Santa committee, I supervised 26 students. We raised $12,000 and provided Christmas to 255 disadvantaged families." Close quote. Second, quote, I was part of a group that for six, a group of 35 teenagers that for six years in a row went to the community food bank the Tuesday night before Thanksgiving and restocked the shelves with food to provide 1,800 disadvantaged families with Thanksgiving dinner." Close quote. And the final one, as president of the local chapter of a service organization for 16 to 18 year old young men, we implemented an outreach and marketing campaign that increased participation in our chapter by 23 percent in six months. Close quote. Now, based on what you just heard, how many of you would give him some money? Raise your hand if you'd give him some money. Now, that was three statements. Imagine, he had 36 similar statements that he could copy and paste into these scholarship applications. Now consider when you take those same, app, app, those sta same statements and you back them up with a letter of recommendation from the chairman of that food bank or the president of that organization. One 12-year-old girl that we worked with made 25 baby quilts and donated them to a women's organization her mother belonged to for the refugees in Kosovo. Five years later, she was applying for scholarships and she remembered that. And she had a picture of herself surrounded by those 25 quilts, which she sent to the global president of the women's organization, asking for a letter of recommendation. And as she applied for scholarships, she was able to attach on the letterhead of the world's largest women's organization a signed letter thanking her for her 25 quilts for Kosovo signed by the international president. What do you think that did for her ability to get scholarships? Getting a college education or a technical training or certificates are becoming more and more important. Education is getting where we have to redo it over and over. But you don't have to go into debt for it. There is lots of free money if you are willing to invest the time. Now I'm going to be up front. It's going to take about 100 hours. And some of you are saying, oh, that's too much, forget it. But let me put it this way. If you spend 100 hours 
and you get only $4,000, you just made $40 an hour. Is that pretty good? If you spend 100 hours and you get 10,000, you just made $100 an hour. Or if you're like our overachieving 13-year-old who put in 360 hours, 320 hours, and got $360,000, she made $1,125 an hour between the age of 13 and 18. You see, the choice is yours. You can either choose to put the time in up front to get the free money for college, or you can choose to pay off the student debt for decades. It's your choice. We can teach you how to do this. And if we do, and if you get the money, would you please let me know so that I can share your success story in my next speech? Thank you very much. Thank you.